Well, hello guys. I hope you are doing well. Today we are going to talk about Google Summer of Code. You might going to ask, hey, why you are going to talk about Google Summer of Code when this channel was all about site reliability engineering? Well, I think when you are doing Google Summer of Code or participating in Google Summer of Code, you learn a lot about software engineering development life cycle. So when you participate in Google Summer of Code, you learn a lot of things while in the process of uh, going through proposal and then getting accepted and then you will start brainstorming on the idea and then you come up with a solution and when eventually your work goes into production so this whole life cycle will give you an over give you an overview about how does software engineering industry looks like how does team working looks like right so i think when you when you participate in Google Summer of Code, you learn about how does a real software engineer thinks. So, be it site reliability engineer, be it software engineer, be it machine learning engineer, be it any role which involves software engineering development, you I think you will learn a lot from this program. So so since this program is about to start, I thought I want to share my experience when I participated in Google Summer of Code in 2020. So it looks like the new Google Summer of Code website has changed a lot. Uh, it used to be different in 2020. But let's see the timeline of this program. So let's see the timeline of this program this year. How does it look like? So it looks like on February 21, all the organizations list will be there on the website of Google Summer of Code and and then i can see oh sorry it would be march 7 because then list of accepted mentoring organizations published so you'll get all the list of the organizations and then from march 7 to april 3 the potential gsa contributor discussed application ideas with the mentoring organization so you start contacting your mentors so let me talk about from you know the listing of organizations to how you contact with your mentors how you start contributing in issues like small issues in box before starting off the main project so when you get the list of organization uh let us go to uh let us go to the old programs that we had past programs like so for 2020 programs this was mine so you can see there's a lot of organizations listed over here right they all participate in 2020 now i was part I, I participated in CERN so you can see they have talked about a lot of things over here you can see the all the projects 2020 projects like what it was all about the name of the project and a little little description about it and then you can go for for the more for the more description of the project what it was about enable modules and windows uh i'm not going to talk about let's see my project what i had done that year yep so you can see the project details over here so this was basically about developing an intelligent alert management system so it was more of for designing a central alert management system where everybody can put all their alerts and then this system is intelligent enough to aggregate same kind of alerts and then a notify point of contact so here you can see to view the code how does it look like right so you can see in 2020, there are a lot of organizations participated, right? And and when you see all the past programs, you will see that there are a few organizations which participate in Google Summer of Code frequently. So I would ask you to go for those organizations because the probability of those organizations participating in this year is more because they regularly come to Google Summer of Code for their projects. And how would you do that? So, and how do you find out like which organizations comes frequently, like every year? 
So here is my friend named Rohit Asarke. He wrote a paper. It's like it will help you to understand like which organization comes frequently, like they, who are common in last years and what's the probability. Like you can see a list which came for like last five years. Then you can anticipate that this this year they are going to come as well. So list out five five organizations from the list and then st start contacting their mentors right and i would ask you to start doing this beforehand like before the listing of the official listing of organizations by gsr because you can go to the past programs you can see the number of projects and then just look for those projects which uh, you know excites you that hey i could have done this i i was interested in this area so see the list of mentors from there uh, let me show you how. So you can let me search for CERN, which I work in 2020, and then you can see the list of projects here. You can see the list of ideal list. Let's go to this list of ideal list, and then over here you can see for list of managers. And there from from there you can get the the email addresses, their contact list. I mean, even they can talk talk on IRCs if you know what IRCs are. So let's say like you 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 contacted five mentors and then you heard from four mentors. So what would be subject there? I would say like first start contacting them. Hey, I, I am interested in participating this this year. Are you guys going to participate this year? So if you are going to participate, am, am, is there any bug or issue that I can fix beforehand so that I can have a head start for this program? For, and, and the most important thing is do not bug, the, bug those mentors because they have their life as well. So have a patience, wait for their mail. Once they mail you back, ask for bugs or issues you can fix and keep on interacting with them until and unless you are going to get the list of organization. Once you get the list of organization, start preparing for proposals. And I'll show you, I'll, I'll show you man, how, does it, how it, does it look like. And I'll put the link in description as well. So this was the list. This was the proposal that I submitted for CERN. So you have to put some important important points, right? Right? Like why this project you wanted to do, what kind of technical knowledge you have, and which will help you to solve this problem. And then you talk about project, and you have to give a you know small idea about how you're going to solve it. You don't have to put all of the information here because you don't know about everything right right now so whatever idea you have just put it inside the uh inside this proposal that hey i'm going to solve this problem using this kind of idea and you have to you know break these projects into tasks so that you have a timeline because when you are participating in google google some of code there's a timeline that is the first phase second phase something like that so in which phase you are going to do what i talked about writing a parser and then I talked about how I am going to you know use those parser to integrate those with different tools and then you talk about technical details like since it was more about breaking the position to tasks and then you talk about more technical details like what kind of technical knowledge you will require to solve this problem and then once you're done with, with it so you, you talk about deliverables right so at the end of this program, what are the things or what are the services you are going to deliver to the, this organization? And then there's a timeline, like from this this week, this week to this week, or from this time to this time, I'm going to do this, something like that. You have, you'll have a, you need to give an overview about what you are going to do in each week. And then the first evolution comes, and then another round comes again, second, evalu for second evaluation, and then the, there's the final evaluation. And then you talk about a little about personal in inspiration, like why does this project inspire you? Why you want to work for CERN, or why you want to work for any organization you want to, you are going to apply for. And then you also need to put some other commitments in, the, in, the, in, in that period, let's say you, you are going to have mid midterm examination you are going to have final term examination then you have to mention that from this period i I'll, I'll have exam and I, I i won't be able to give much more time 
I'll put the link for this proposal so that you have an idea. So we discussed that we are going to contact five mentors. Now we heard from four mentors. Now you have to cut it down to three, like three organizations and three mentors that you excites you most and write three proposals for each project to each mentor. And before submitting those before submitting those proposals officially, I would ask you to ask those mentors, hey, I, I have I have this proposal draft. Would you please um, would you please take a look at it and and give me a feedback? So with the help of this, you because at the end those those, those mentors are going to accept your accept your proposal. So why not to show them before? Why not to get the feedback from them? So once you get feedback, they will start commenting on your proposal that, hey, it should look like this and th this need to change and change that. So that will help you to make your proposal, help your proposal to get accepted. And once your proposals are reviewed once or twice, make their changes and then finally submit the three proposals and now wait for, wait for acceptance. But do not sit idle because the time between submitting the proposal and hearing from GSOC program that you, are, you have been accepted, it's long. In that period, keep on talking with those three mentors that are there any more issues, are there any more bugs that I can solve? I, can I, can I work, you, work with you on some issues that will help me to learn the code base? Keep on interacting with them. Don't let them think that you are not interested anymore. Once you hear from the program that you have been accepted, congratulations, but since this idea is not foolproof, I'm, I just said 99.99%, but there's still a chance like 0.01% that you can still not get the chance to participate in Google Summer of Code this year. So take the learnings from this year, take the experience and use the same experience in the next year. So you might have done a few mistakes, try to improve those mistakes and apply the next year. But I would ask you to at least participate once in your life when you're in college. Well, thank you for watching this video. And I hope this video is going to help you in preparing for Google Summer of Code 2022. Do let me in comments below if you have any more questions, if I did not clear anything up. Like this video and subscribe to the channel, especially subscribe to the channel because this will help me in making more videos. I have seen like many people are watching the videos but they are not subscribing please subscribe to this channel and all the relevant links are in link tree you can go visit there until then bye bye see you in the next video